capability to get the aircraft there and back. But out of their 21 bombs, they put two on the runway, and that was all you needed. If you think it's not a very good score, it's worth bearing in mind that the bombs they were using were just dumb bombs. They were the same as they'd used in the Second World War. No guidance there or anything like that. So you had to put a lot of bombs down in order to be sure of hitting the target. And they did just that. They prevented the runway being used um, by the Argentine forces for their fast jets. So it significantly affected the war. Now I think we're going to still see the bomb doors open as she comes back this time, but they'll be closing as she goes by. about this aeroplane is we have discovered since we've been displaying her that she has this amazing Vulcan effect. People flock, they, they, they stop what they're doing to come and watch Vulcan. And we've also discovered that small children who've never seen Vulcan before when they ask, when they're asked what they think of her, they think she's some kind of new stealth bomber. They don't know that she's actually 50 years old, and that's very important because we want to use this aeroplane to inspire the youth of the country to become engineers and designers. We need half a million new skilled engineers in the next seven years. Falcon can be used to do that. If you're in engineering or in design, you're in air, anything in the aeronautical world, you should be thinking of supporting Vulcan because she is going to inspire young people to become engineers and to join in in this industry that we're all so proud of. This year she has a new name painted on the nose, Spirit of Great Britain. die bulldog spirit because of course it was an absolutely enormous task getting this aeroplane back into the air after she'd retired from Royal Air Force service in 1993. There were naysayers and doom mongers galore who said it couldn't be done, it was quite impossible and she is indeed the most um, exotic and complicated return to restoration to flight of any historic warbird there's ever been. And that we had absolutely enormous help from all sorts of people, the Civil Aviation Authority, Marshall Aerospace, who are the engineering authority, um, lots of other companies, AD Holdings, AirBP, BAE Systems, EADS, Goodrich, Jefferson, Judd Power, Kearsley Airways, Megit, Messier Doughty, Rolls-Royce and Subaru. And most of all, Sir Jack Haywood and Eddie Forrester of Aerobytes. engines at full chat because I suspect the wheels are coming down now because she's going to land in a minute I do recommend that when she's down please do go down to the Vulcan village right at the far left hand end of the display area the reason for it being so far away is that's where she'll be parked and if Taft Stone the chief engineer is feeling in a good mood you might even be able to get a tour around the aircraft it'll cost you a little money they they ask for a, a donation of folding money they also really continue to need your support. Please go to the Vulcan village and buy anything they've got there. They've got some wonderful Vulcan mementos there. We'd be very happy if you would buy some of those. We're hoping that we're going to keep her going um, until at least 2014. But in 2012, there's some rather special occasions. There is, I believe, some games or other happening at about that time. But also the Queen's Jubilee. And the Queen is actually very fond of the Vulcan. Um, and she wants her, we, we believe, to fly over Buckingham Palace in 2012. And she has, one of her corgis is actually called Vulcan. Well, I should say Dorgy, because it's a cross between a Dachshund and a corgi. But one of the Queen's dogs is called Vulcan. So, 
the thing about this aircraft is she does need your support. She is the most popular aeroplane in the country. She is the aircraft of the great British people because it's you who have kept her going. You've given your money in amounts from pounds to tens, sometimes even hundreds of thousands of pounds. So please do keep her flying. And now watch as she lands. We shan't have a braking parachute today. I don't think the runway is so long. We don't need it. But I think we will see as 16 wheels touch down now with two wheels left to go those are the ones in the nose but we hope that martin will be able to keep the nose up as she floats down the runway using aerodynamic braking flow of the air hitting that enormous wing surface those wheels still well up as she passes us and those other 16 wheels rolling down the air brakes out top and bottom of the wing there and those wheels just touching down now isn't that the most prosh blend of cleaner jet fuel? Zyko Shopping, the aircraft can be traced way back to November 1945 and the YB-52 prototype, which first flew on April the 15th, 1952, out of Renton Field, Washington State. There was quite a lengthy development saga attached to the B-52. There were numerous changes of mind by the USAF about what it wanted. The original designs were turboprop powered, but eventually they settled on the eight-engine jet configuration we see before us. There were just three B-52As built. The first production model was the B-52B, and right from the start it was clear it was an outstanding strategic platform. Just think of Operation Power Flight in January 1957, when three B-52... Barrier retired five years ago. It was a B-52 that mounted the longest ever combat mission in history. It was part of Operation Desert Strike which targeted Iraqi communications facilities and power stations in September 1996. It lasted 36, 34 hours and was a 16,000 mile round trip from the B-52's home base in Barksdale, Louisiana. Currently six squadrons operate the B-52H as well as the Air Force Flight Test Center at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Quite a nice curved approach from the B-52 here, before lining up for finals on 2-7. Very few airfields actually uh, able to support B-52 operations. I know that at some displays in the past, even at big venues, they've caused occasional problems with those outrigger wheels on the wingtips taking out runway lights and the like, but no such problems here at Fairford with the vast areas of hard standing at our disposal. Sorry, in a few minutes uh, we will do that. 